Hello everyone, and welcome to another exciting Pathfinder 2E lecture. Hi there, I am Jason Bullman. I'm the director of game design at Paizo and one of the creators of the Pathfinder role-playing game. And over the past couple weeks, we've been talking about building a character, understanding spells, even designing an adventure. But the one thing we haven't covered is combat. And how does combat work in Pathfinder 2nd Edition? So today we're going to explore that topic, and I am joined, as always, by my good buddy, Dan. Hey there, Dan. What how are is you? happening? Oh man, how are you? I am doing well. Uh, I was just telling the folks that, you know, we've, we've, you know, we started this whole kind of tutorial series by building uh, a goblin character for you, a goblin rogue uh, named Silo. Silo? And, uh, you know, the week after that, we, we talked about designing encounters. Last week, we looked at spells. One of the things that we haven't really covered in depth that is certainly worthy of exploration is combat and how combat works in the game. Because, frankly, it's probably the most important rules kind of structure in Pathfinder. It's a fantasy role-playing game. Combat comes up quite a bit. It does happen. It does happen. Yeah, yeah. So when when words and diplomacy no longer suffice, when a monster <laughs> comes sleeking out of the darkness, it's time to roll initiative and get yourself into a fight. So today what we're going to do here, Dan, I'm going to pop us over to the other screen here. And today what we're going to do is we are going to talk about combat. We're going to explore how combat works. And, you know, we might even find ourselves in a combat uh, <laughs> before the end of this uh, stream is done. So the first thing you kind of need to understand, Dan, and I know you know this. This is something you have experienced plenty in our games together, is that while you're playing Pathfinder, there, there tends to be some kind of modes of play. We, we talk about the modes of play. And oftentimes when you're going from place to place, we call that just kind of exploration mode. You're going around, you're talking to people, you're doing things. You're, there's no initiative, there's no turn order. People just act and describe what their characters are doing and have conversation. That's fine. The other, uh, there's another mode called downtime, which is kind of more abstract. Time flies really fast and folks do training or work odd jobs and stuff. And we're, we'll talk about that at some point in time. And we'll go into more about exploration mode at some time too. But today we're going to talk about what's called encounter mode or combat. Now, you always enter combat from exploration mode. I suppose you could enter combat from downtime. It's like, yes, I'm working on this piece of leather armor. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, somebody comes out to stab you. You could, but it's pretty uncommon. Uh, it, what's more likely is that um, you're exploring a dungeon, you're, you're, you're off doing a mission of some sort, and uh, you run into a monster or some foes, and combat gets started. So one thing that's important for folks to understand is that what you're doing in exploration mode can affect how combat starts. Right, And I, I know that sounds obvious, but in Pathfinder, that actually may have a mechanical implementation, right? So normally, all things being equal, at the start of combat, you roll a perception check. Perception isn't a skill, it's just a, a statistic that every character has. And, you know, you, you will roll perception as your initiative, and whoever gets the highest result gets to act first in combat. That's kind of the basic initiative, but... Exploration can oftentimes lead to you rolling something else for initiative, which, Dan, I know you like to do quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like to do, uh, like, stealth. Uh, if, yeah. if I have that ability, that's always a good one to roll from. So Yeah. So that's the thing about Pathfinder 2E, is that you can end up rolling various skills for initiative instead of perception, based on what you were doing. So if you're a rogue and you're sneaking out ahead of the party, you might get to roll stealth for initiative, and doing so grants you special bonuses. In other situations, you might find yourself rolling any number of skills. In, in fact, any skill can be rolled for initiative if it makes sense based on you know the GM's call. So if you're, say, tracking a wolf through the woods and you're following its trail using survival, you could find yourself rolling survival for initiative because you suddenly realize that the tracks you're following aren't hours old, they're seconds old. And you're like, wait, this still smells of wolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might be right nearby, right? You, you can find yourself using survival, right? Oh, you're, you're trying to climb up a, a, a tower and people up top 
uh, are suddenly deciding to shoot at you with crossbows, you might find yourself rolling athletics for initiative because you're trying to climb the tower as quickly as possible. So there's a bunch of different ways you can roll initiative. So let's kind of see this in practice. All right. So um, I do have this uh, PDF here. Uh, we're going to use this to kind of walk through the chapter nine in the core rulebook. This is your key chapter for understanding the various modes of play and combat. Now it starts off here by kind of talking about how checks work and all the different kinds of checks you might make, specific sorts of checks like attack rolls and perception. Uh, but eventually we end up getting to talking about initiative and how to start off a fight. And that is in here uh, after we kind of get past all of the kind of basic setup stuff. We'll come back to some of this stuff for sure. Um, here we are talking about senses. Okay, so encounter mode. This is where we need to be. This is all about rolling initiative. So, Dan. Yes. Silo is uh, living in the town of Wormbone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, is a newfound adventurer, right? And doesn't have a party yet, doesn't have any allies, just looking for odd jobs to get some coin, because you're you're poor, Dan, you're really poor. Uh, and uh, you need some coin. Jason, can we stick to the game, please? That'd be great. <laughs> so you're wandering around town, and uh, you see a signpost uh, that has some notices on it. And one of them looks like a job that you might be able to tackle, even by your lonesome. Uh, it is it is a kindly old woman non named Granny Appleknees, uh, who would who would who would like someone to venture down into her basement to investigate why her uh, uh, larder down there keeps disappearing and the strange scratching noises. Now, this this sounds like just the job for you going down into a basement and solving a problem. That how hard could that be? I got this. All I got right. this. So uh, you arrive at uh, Granny Applebee's house, and she's a kindly old woman. She's like, "Oh, oh, bless you! Aren't you just adorable?" <laughs> and she like pinches your cheek and pets your frog. <laughs> oh, nice, yeah. Now, yeah, there's some there's some strange noises coming from my basement, and I don't go down there anymore because I'm afraid. I need you to venture down into my basement and solve whatever vicious. Nasty thing is happening down there. Probably a dragon. Don't worry. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, you, you, you gather yourself, you ready yourself. So you get your weapons out, you know, uh, uh or you get a weapon out and you venture down the creaky stairs into granny apple uh, uh, cellar. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go ahead and bring up, make this go away and bring up. So, Dan, you begin making your way down the creaky stairs, and as you look down into the gloom, because you have dark vision, you can see. We're not going to worry about lighting sources. Um, as a goblin, you can you can see. And uh, looking into the darkened cellar, uh, you notice that on the far side, the wall has collapsed, leading into some dark tunnel. And in that dark tunnel, you see two beady little red eyes that quickly begin moving towards you. And this signals the start of combat. <laughs> oh, shit. We're just going right for it. Yeah, no. Okay. We don't got time to... You don't got time to think. You don't got Nobody time, to, time do to move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, I will let you describe to me how you're going downstairs so that so that we can, we can explore how initiative might work. Okay, cool. So uh, um, more than likely, Silo is basically as armed exactly as you see in that picture right up there. He does have the spear. He does have the short sword out. Um, I like to think he still has the pipe, and it's in full effect. Like, it's sure. it's fully smoking and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Lord Leggiesworth is definitely sitting up on the hat. Um, yeah, and on he the frog is, hat, the, the magical yeah. piece of equipment that we have yet to describe. <laughs> that definitely exists in the world of Pathfinder. You that's heard right. it here first. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so what I think though, is that I honestly think, uh, I think that I'm a pretty darn scared, but not going to let that show. 
right. to Granny Apple knees or anything. Um, so I would imagine that he's moving slow. He's already kind of crouched down. He's taking his time. And the second he sees these red eyes looking at him, he's, yeah. he's probably going to, you know, A, get ready for fight. B, shit his pants. I don't know which order, but it's going to happen <laughs> in one of those one of those orders. I don't know. Um, sure. But yeah, so he's he's definitely taking his time. I don't know if I would say that he's sneaking, but he's probably trying to be quiet just because he's scared, truthfully. All right. So you go down the stairs kind of cautiously, kind of carefully. The rat still uh, quite possibly senses that you're there, but I am going to allow you to roll stealth for initiative. So okay. uh, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to roll initiative for uh, my little rat friend here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select him. Initiative. Ooh, that's quite good. Um, it is. Now, Dan, I've you got... rolled you rolled a 17. What's your bonus to stealth? Seven. Seven. Mm-hmm. So you got a 24. Four, yes. You gotta be joking <laughs> me. You beat me by one. Uh, look, roll 20 likes me tonight. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So the... Uh, the we have just rolled initiative. So um, what happens next is we go into the combat round. Now, the combat round is basically a cycle of everybody getting to take their turns. Uh, at once everybody's gotten a chance to take their turn, we advance to the next round. Rounds are really only important when you're tracking durations. There are some spells and effects that last from, you know, one round to a minute or, you know, four rounds or something like that. Um, so we'll, we'll keep track of that, but it probably won't be too important in this fight. Uh, but here we are at the start of the first round of combat. Now, uh, once we've done that, we will go ahead and sort the characters by initiative. Now, as GM, if you've got multiple monsters, like let's say there was a whole bunch of rats, I could decide to have all the rats go on one initiative. That is perfectly fine. They don't all have to have their own initiative. You can, however, have them have their own initiative. So if I had two rats, maybe I would want to give them two different initiatives just to kind of mix things up a bit. Or if I had a whole bunch of rats and say, you know, uh, one rat swarm, I could have the rat swarm go on a different initiative. But for right now, all I've got is one giant rat. One goblin versus one giant rat. Surely this is going to be a fight that you are just going to crush. Now, can I can I just say I'm so glad you decided to go with a rat and not a swarm. I don't think I've ever <laughs> had a good enc- encounter with a swarm. Ever yeah, at well, all. you know, uh, uh, honestly, for your first fight uh, with with poor Silo here, I wanted to give you something that uh, was a bit more manageable. And a swarm is a swarm is quite powerful. Jason, you are, as they say, benevolent. That is what I hear. Now, all right, so we're going to go into taking turns. Now, um, everybody knows, you know, Pathfinder uh, 2nd Edition is well, well known for having the three action uh, system. So at the start of combat, you beat me in initiative by one, uh, which means the rat doesn't even really know that you're there. Um, Now, this has an effect because you're a rogue and because you rolled stealth for initiative. Your stealth score is higher than my perception. So it doesn't even really see you. So the rat, instead of charging at you, the rat is kind of milling around in the tunnel there. You can see it. You don't think it's seen you yet. So there's that. Now, we're going to get to you taking your turn. And on your turn, you're going to get to do three actions. Now... Characters have a lot of actions they can choose from. In fact, let's go ahead and go back to our PDF here for just a moment. And we'll come back here to encounter mode. And what I'd like to do is just kind of talk about the various kinds of actions you can take. Now, one thing that's important to note is that actions can take one, two, or even three actions to perform. Like each thing that you might want to do has a cost and a number of actions. There are even some things that don't cost an action at all. Like dropping a thing that you're holding doesn't cost you an action. You can just let go of things that you're holding on. But most things cost one action. Now, it's also important to note that you can repeat actions as much as you want and do them in any order you want. So you can move three times. You can move twice uh, and then make an attack. You can stand still and attack three times. 
You could do all of those things because each one of them only costs one action. Now, there are some things that cost more than one action, so you probably can't do more than one of those, those in a turn, but you can combine them with other things in any combination like. So let's go uh, down here. We got a list of all the basic actions. And Dan, I want to walk through some of these because I think they are important. Yeah. Uh, before we get too far off in the reads, because the very first one is a special one, um, you get three actions per turn. You also get one reaction. Now, the reaction you don't have to spend on your turn. As a matter of fact, you usually won't. A reaction usually happens because something else happened, right? So um, the, the classic one that I think a lot of folks are, are used to is something called attack of opportunity, which basically says if somebody lets their guard down near you, you can spend your reaction to take a free attack at them. Now, not everybody in the game has attack of opportunity anymore. As a matter of fact, most characters don't have reactions at all, uh, but... For those who do, uh, they always come with a trigger that says, if this happens, then you can spend your reaction and do this thing. And if you don't spend your reaction by the start of your next turn, that's no big deal. And at the start of your next turn, you get your reaction back if you've spent it. So the very first action in this list is actually called aid. Aid is basically saying, I want to help out my friend. And so on your turn, you spend an action to set them up. And then that allows you to do a reaction to help them when they do the thing. So for example, if somebody was trying to climb a tree and you wanted to give them a boost, right? You could make an athletics check to aid them. Uh, so on your turn, you would be like, you, you know, get there, put your hands out so they can step on it. And then uh, when they do that on their turn, you spend your reaction to give them a boost. And you make a check and possibly give them a bonus. That's what aid does. The next action is one of a bevy of uh, move actions. So it's best for us to actually jump to the most important move action, which is just called stride. Stride is for an action. You move up to your speed. That's it. Now, there are other move actions as well. One of the most common ones is called step. Step just says you move five feet, but your movement doesn't provoke any reactions. So sometimes reactions trigger because people try and move away from you. That is the most common form of reaction is someone tries to get away from you and you hook them or make an attack at them or do something. Step says you can move five feet and not trigger any reaction. Um, let's go back up to the place that we were at. Crawl. Crawl says you move five feet while prone. <laughs> and you still provoke an attack. So you don't want to be crawling around on the ground. It's not, it's not an effective way of getting around in combat. But it's being suggested in chat that I just do crawl three times, which maybe that would maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. I you know, I, I, I think we'll go through some more of these while you think about it. <laughs> uh delay is a free action you do at the start of your turn that just says take your turn later. Don't do anything, just take your turn later. Drop but, um no, really quick, if you were to, yeah. to delay, yeah. do you have to pick a time that you're delaying until, or do you just jump in and you just do uh, excuse me, Jason, I'd like to go now if you do a delay? Um, no, you don't, you don't specifically pick a time. You just remove yourself from the initiative order and then, um, uh, you can, uh, decide when you want to go later. Okay. Before the end of the round, I assume, or something uh, like that. No, it's just, it's just, you delay until you decide to go again, until you decide uh -oh. to go, which has to happen after someone's turn. Okay. Um, okay. uh, and if it gets back to your spot on initiative again, you just take your turn as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, there's drop prone. This just says drop prone, you know, in the space you are in drop prone. And why would you do that? Well, there, there are reasons you might want to avoid uh, an attack or give yourself a bonus against range attacks or things like that. Um, escape is an action that just allows you to try and break free from something grabbing you. Um, that's a pretty common thing to do. You can either make an athletics check, an acrobatics check, or an unarmed attack to try and break free. Uh, interact is really common. This is a very generic action. But interact says you basically use your hands to manipulate an object or the terrain. You open a door, you, you know, open a chest, you draw a, uh, a weapon, right? All of these are interact actions. Okay. Uh, leap, leap just says you jump five foot, uh, five foot forward, uh, or 10 foot if your speed is 30 or more. Okay. Right? So you just jump. You don't have to make a check. You can just jump five feet. Uh, Ready? Um, ready is weird. Ready is two actions. 
that allows you to set up any sort of reaction you can imagine. That makes sense that you could do with one action. So let's say you, uh, you, you were standing at the edge of a open doorway and you wanted to attack the first person who came through. Well, how would you time out doing that since everybody goes on their own turn? Well, Reddy says, all right, I'm going to prepare to attack anyone that goes through this door. The trigger is an enemy walks through the door. My action is I take an attack at them. So you've just basically set up your own custom reaction. Okay. That's what Reddy okay. does. Uh, release is just a free action. You drop something. Um, seek. Um, seek means that uh, seek is one action, which means you kind of scan an area for an object or a creature. This is the action you would do to try and find someone who's hiding um, or to locate an object that is somewhere hidden in the room, right? Seek is kind of that action. Um, sense motive. Uh, this is one action as well. This kind of is, is about sizing up an individual to see whether or not uh, they're, they're perhaps mind controlled or lying to you or otherwise not what they seem. Stand up says for one action, you stand up from prone. Uh, we already covered step and stride. Uh, we'll cover strike here in a moment. Strike is by far the most important action in here. Uh, there is take cover. We'll explain that a little later with cover, but basically you can spend an action to kind of take cover. Um, and that is it for the basic action. There's a whole bunch of specialty basic actions that are things like burrow if you have that ability, fly if you have that ability, grab an edge if you're falling off a cliff, <laughs> right? right. Um, yeah. some, of, some of these are, are uh, actions that only really happen in very special circumstances. Um, averting your gaze, right? Oh no, there's a monster that if I look at it, I'll turn to stone, right? There's a Medusa. Um, you can avert your gaze to give yourself a bonus. So okay. uh, there's that. So let's get back and talk about strikes here for a moment because strikes are special. Strike okay. is just make an attack. That's it, right? Um, you you make uh, an attack using any one of your weapons. Um, that's the basics of it, right? You make an attack roll. If you if your roll is higher than their AC, you deal damage. You roll damage and apply it as normal. We'll kind of get to the nuts and bolts of that here in a minute. Um, but the one thing I do want to note here is that strike is one of the few actions that if you take it more than once in a round, something special happens. And that special thing is you start taking penalties on the attack rolls. So <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll cover that more here in a bit, but it's important to note now that just standing still and attacking three times in a row isn't always going to be your best option in Pathfinder. You very likely are going to find yourself in situations where, frankly, taking two attacks and then doing something else with your third action is a good idea. Either moving to a more advantageous position or drawing a different weapon or readying a potion or any sort of thing, right? There's a whole bunch of things that make sense um, in those situations. So... We've covered the kind of basic actions. Let's get back to your turn. Let me go ahead and hide. There we are. So here we are. We're back, back in the action. Silo is in the basement of Granny Applenees. And he sees a fearsome giant rat <laughs> off, off up ahead of you. Now, um, there's a few things worth noting here uh, in this environment. We've got some, uh, we've got some tables. Right, these are tables. Uh, we've got some barrels and stuff floating around here. There's some wine rack over here in the corner. Kind of a large, old, dusty cobweb over here in the corner of the room. And then there's this hole in the wall. And these squares are filled with rubble and count as difficult terrain. Now, difficult terrain is special because it to move through difficult terrain, it basically costs you twice as much movement. So if each square is five feet, walking into a square of difficult terrain costs you ten feet of your movement. So, Dan, it's your turn. You have okay. three actions. What would you like to do? Well, um, let's see. So, uh, did I get a sense that this rat really was staring at me, or do I get a sense that I saw it and maybe it doesn't know I'm there? So, at first you thought, that rat um, definitely sees me. But, in fact, what it might be is that the rat just kind of sensed that something was coming down the stairs. Maybe it heard the door open up above, right? Light is spilling in from above, and the okay. rat is clearly coming to investigate. Okay, okay. Even if um, you don't actually think it sees you yet. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. So, 
But you also know that unless you find cover, uh, the rat will be able to see you. You won't even be able to make a stealth check because it can just see you. You're, mm -hmm. you're not hiding behind it. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. So uh, it's probably uh, in my best interest to do something like this. Yeah, that would get you into a good place. Um, now, one thing of note in, in Pathfinder is, um, you know, when you're, when you're measuring uh, distance here is, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, right? That's no problem. Diagonals, however, count a little differently. So the first one's 5, but the second one is 10. Then 5, then 10, 5, 10. So um, distance, the diagonals um, cost you a little more for every other diagonal. It costs you 5 more. So okay. just something to keep okay. in mind. We're using a handy measuring tool here, so we don't really need to worry about it too much. But um, All right, I'm going to try to uh, sneak my way down here. Okay. So you go moving uh, and uh, getting behind the table. Now, the table isn't going to provide you too much cover because, you know, it is a table. It's just, yeah. There's nothing under Yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful that with the, uh, the, you know, somewhat darkened area and just having general stuff there, if I can blend in at least a little bit, maybe that'll help. So. Sure. So that was your first action. So you've taken one mm -hmm. action, and that was to move down and, and kind of get behind the table because you're pretty sure the rat didn't see you. Yes. Um, so that's your first action. What would you like to do okay. with your second action? So my second action. Mm, boy. Uh, this is. So I was thinking that I would maybe try to drop my implements and get my my bow, which would sure. be an action if I drop them, not sheathe them, but if I drop them and yes. grab my bow. That's yeah. a second action. Yep. But so then I could... would have to. I would have to knock the like notch the arrow in, which would be a third action, right? No, that only would that you only have to spend an action to load crossbows. Bows, uh, you can just fire. Oh, okay, so okay. If you wanted to uh, draw your bow, you could drop your spear and dagger, mm -hmm. just drop them on the floor, uh, mm -hmm. and then you could draw your bow and take one shot this round. Okay, okay. Um, and let me. I'm assuming that I do not have a shot where I am, though. So that gets us into a very interesting part of how combat works, which is determining cover. So you're thinking about making a possible ranged attack. Now, the first thing we need to do is figure out whether or not you can see the rat at all from this position. Now, the way we do that is we just try and determine if any point in your square, the square you are occupying, could draw a line to any point in the rat square without going through solid object. So in this case, if we look from the corner here and we go to this corner and we assume that the wall, this wall right here is where it's at, I think we can draw a pretty convincing line From here to here. Oh, because we could use the corner of the square. It doesn't need to be from the center of the square. So that's just to determine whether or sight. not you can see. Okay. So you can see the rat from where you are currently at. That means you can make the attack without it having complete cover, um, which would be very bad. Um, mm -hmm. However, now we need to see whether or not it has cover from you. And to do that... We do a center line to center line measure. So in this case, okay. I'm just going to do this. And as I can see here, the center line to center line goes through this wall right here. Mm -hmm. So because it crosses through a solid barrier, that means the creature has cover. Now, cover comes in three varieties. The first variety is uh, the most common, which is just cover, and that means it gets a plus two bonus to its AC. There is lesser cover, or, or kind of light cover. Um, this is usually provided by other creatures being in the way. So if you had an ally in the way, it would get light cover. That's just a bonus of one. And then there are some circumstances where it's like, wow, you can almost not see that creature at all. It has greater cover. Now, greater cover you can also get by having normal cover and using the take cover action, right? Mm, so okay. that is how that works. So in this case, Dan, 
I am going to say that this critter has greater cover because if I draw a line from your square to it, I you can't see more than a sliver of it before it hits the wall, right? Mm -hmm. So I will say that the creature has greater cover. Yeah, that is fair. That's fair. I mean, that, okay. that doesn't mean you can't take the attack. It just means that uh, it, you have a, a, it will be a much harder time to hit. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? What the hell? Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and, and take a shot with my short bow. It's a plus seven to hit. Um, now, would I, would I still give a full plus seven or do I let the AC do the math that they would have cover? So, um, the way that it's going to work is that cover is going to give it a bonus to its AC. Okay. Okay. Right. So I don't need to change anything on my side. I still make my attack as normal. Yeah. And I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how much greater cover is. So greater cover is going to give it a plus four bonus to its AC. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. All right. So you, just so we've got it totally clear here. You spent your first action moving. You spent your mm -hmm. second action drawing your bow after having dropped your other two weapons, which are in your square. And then uh, now that you have your bow drawn, you're going to take your third action to take a shot at the rat. Okay. Yes. I have the rat stat block here. I'm looking right at it. I know what its AC is with the greater cover. So you can go ahead this thing. and make your attack roll and add uh, your bonus to using your short bow. Okay, well. <laughs> so, uh, so folks at a, home can't a, see that because the, the, the turn order is in the way, but there it is. That He rolled a six. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so a six plus seven is a 13. You fire the arrow at the rat. It goes firing into the tunnel, but just clatters off the, the walls of the tunnel. So you hear it kind of clack, 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 clack. And you hear the rat kind of let off some squeaks but uh, you're pretty sure you missed. And that okay. is the end of your turn. So I am going to go ahead and have the rat move now. So the rat has a speed of 30, uh, and it also has a climb speed of 10, but I don't think I'm going to have it climb. I think I'm just going to have it uh, brute force its way through the rubble. It's just going to crawl right on through. So I'm going to go ahead and have each one of these squares count as 10 feet. So 10, 20, 30. That is its first action. Now, obviously, it comes into the room and uh, you are not hidden well enough to be uh, invisible to it. Um, and you did not take an action to hide, which is a thing you could have done using stealth. Um, so uh, it does see you right away. It doesn't even need to make a check because it, too, has dark vision. So that's its first action. For its second action, I go ahead and uh, just just measure it out here. Uh, let's see. We are going to go ahead and have it go. Yep, we'll just do that. It comes running straight up to you. Only 15. So the rat um, comes running straight up to you, and it is going to go ahead and attempt to bite you. Um, so let's go ahead and roll that and see how it resolves. Oh, I didn't roll so well either. A four, uh, giving me a total of 11. That is not going to hit. All not right. Hit. So here we are. We have now completed one whole round of combat. We've done some movement. We've investigated how cover works. And we've talked about positioning. So one thing that's, that's important to know in combat is that generally speaking, as long as you're adjacent to a foe, you can make an attack with them. You may have a reach weapon that allows you to attack foes at reach. One thing that we didn't measure actually, Dan, was the range on your short bow attack, but I'm going to wager it was close enough that we don't have to worry about a range penalty. Um, because attacks, yeah. have, attacks have a lot of kind of interesting things associated with them. So one of the first things you do is check... Uh, the various traits of the weapons that you're using. Because weapon traits can come in a wide variety, and some give you like, oh, this gives you a bonus if you attack another foe with that weapon after the first foe, as you kind of sweep through them and hit someone. Um, other foes have uh, other weapons like, oh, this is a backstabbing weapon, and if your foe is flat-footed, it deals an extra point of damage. Um, 
So weapon traits can affect your attack rolls and your damage rolls and do all sorts of things. So you want to make sure that you're aware of how those work. Um, and it, because they're so based on weapon, I don't think it's worth covering all of them here right now. Uh, but should you, uh, you know, make a uh, hit with like a rapier, you're definitely going to want to know and get a critical hit. You're definitely going to want to know what the uh, deadly property does because mm -hmm. it's going to come into play. So um, we'll we'll keep going here and maybe see if we get a critical hit. I can explain one then. Uh, you know, whoever gets one first, we'll see. Uh, but that was the end of one round of combat. So let's now go to round two, Dan, and it's going to come back to you. You're back in front here. Uh, the rat is right in front of you uh, after having crawled out of the tunnel to attack you. Um, your weapons are at your feet. What do you do? Um, so uh, can I... I might have forgotten. So the spear cannot be used as a melee weapon, of right? Course it That's can. just... A, yeah. Oh, it no, can, it can be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because all I have in my on my book is that uh, the traits is that it's thrown. 20 feet, and and so I wasn't sure if I could also use that as a melee. So melee weapons uh, with the thrown trait means that you can throw them. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Melee weapons without the thrown trait, you cannot throw. <laughs> okay. Um, well, then I'm going to, uh, can I pick up my uh, short sword and my spear? So you can pick up the short sword or the spear as an action. Okay. Each one is going okay. to cost you one action because they kind of clattered to the ground and you're going to have to go grab them. Um, okay. And so you can grab one or the other for one interact action. Okay. All right. And then can I spend another interact action to pick up the other one? And no, because then I. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to finesse this a little bit, but uh, I will pick up the short sword. Okay. And that's that's a that's an interact action, right? Yes. yes. I still have two left. Um. Okay, yeah, you know what? And then uh, I'm going to take an attack with my short sword. Sure. Now, uh, some folks might be like, well, does the rat get a free attack because he picked up his short sword? And the rat, that, that interact action would have provoked an attack of opportunity if the rat had attack of opportunity. But it doesn't. So It does not. Yeah. Uh, I so mean, you, almost with everything, you have to test it once to be like... Yeah, I know. You'll find do, out. Do they have this? <laughs> You'll find out one way or the other. You'll find out. Um, okay. So uh, go ahead and make your attack against the rat. Okay. And this is um, this is a plus seven. Um, okay. 13. A six again is not going to do it. So um, you take another wild swing at the rat, but it just does not manage to connect. So okay. the rat kind of nimbly dodges out of the way. You do still have one action left, but remember, this is where that multiple attack penalty is going to come in. Now, multiple attack penalty says for your second attack, you take a minus five, and for your third attack, you take a minus 10. Unless the weapon is agile. Uh, my weapon is agile. Oh, well, uh, look at that. Illustrative. Um, <laughs> so uh, agile weapons, the penalty is minus four, minus eight. So it's it's okay. it's one less on each each extra attack. Okay. So, so I can take another attack and it'll be a plus three instead of a plus seven because I have an agile weapon. Correct. If it wasn't you know an what? agile weapon, it would be down to a plus two. Okay, let's do this. Let's uh mm, boy. Mm, what the hell? Let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my other attack at a plus three. All right. Oh, 19. A 19, so the rat nimbly dodges to one side. But uh, you quickly reverse your uh, uh, attack and stab forward and manage to stab the rat. You have hit, Dan. So go ahead and roll me some damage here. So here's what happens. Um, now that you've managed to score a hit, the next thing you will do is roll damage. Damage is then applied to the creature, uh, and if it has any resistances or immunities, we would reduce the damage or mark it as immune. So this is a rat, however, it doesn't really have any immunities, but let's say you had a flaming uh, sword that dealt fire damage and you were attacking a creature that was resistant to fire. It might say something like resist fire five, in which case, if you don't do at least six points of damage, your attack would do no damage. Um, mm -hmm. But in this case, it's a rat. It's not really resistant to damage. Uh, it, it, it's there to take damage. So um, we're going to go ahead and roll that damage and uh, and see how that plays. So go ahead right. and bounce me a D6. 
Yes. Plus, and this plus is your bonus. Plus four, because um, I use dex for my bonus. All right. Okay, that's a five. All right, <laughs> so uh, you did five points of damage to the rat. I'm going to go ahead and deal five to it. So it is now down to just three hit points. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. However, it is now the rat's turn because that was all three of your actions. So let's go ahead and have the rat attack back. The rat doesn't have much in the way of special tactics. It mostly just runs up to you and bites. It's a very simple creature. Other creatures might have special actions that they could do. Things like breathe fire or, uh, you know, do burrowing attacks or all sorts of things. Cast spells. Creatures come in a million different varieties and can have a lot of different special abilities. In one of these future streams, we're going to talk about building a creature, and I'm going to have Dan build his first ever monster for Pathfinder. It's going to be a blast. Uh, so oh, that sounds fun. That, that'll come soon. Uh, but for today, let's just have the rat try and take a bite out of you. So here it comes. Here's its jaw attack. 14. I don't think that's going to do it. Um, that is going to come up short. So let's go ahead and have it attack again. It really, really only has the one trick. So... Fortunately, its jaw attack is agile as well. How about a 16, mm. Dan? Not going to happen, Jason. Just Not short. going to happen. Just short. Last attack. The The dice rolls are getting better, but the, the penalty is killing me here. So um, <laughs> it attempts to bite you all three times, and it is going to miss all three times. Got real close. Which armor class? 17? 18. 18. Ah, yeah. okay. I got to yeah. roll pretty high. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that first attack getting only a, uh, seven didn't help. All right. I got lucky on that one. Like yeah, that you did. was, you did. that was, you did. that's the big one. Yeah. yeah I, I, I blame the my, frog. My, my, my AC should be 17, but the frog adds another one. So the what frog, you do? Uh, yeah, it's you fine. get a plus one frog bonus. That's, <laughs> he's, that's, that's he's sounds... my ears. <laughs> like he's a, you know, like he's a, a mech controller. He's like it's, dodging me out of the way. This is some ratatouille nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look, we're going to make some ratatouille later oh, when I'm I done with this fight. You, Thank you, you. Put it on the board. You, you I can make dumb jokes too, Jason. Yeah, to Come on. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Tutorial uh, over. On. No, all right. Uh, moving on. So. <laughs> um, let's do this. So there's something that uh, I really want to try with Silo. Uh, but to do that, I need to have another weapon in my hand. All so right. I'm going to use the interact and I'm going to pick up my spear. All right, so now you have your spear and dagger. Um, mm -hmm. Now, short sword. this is, uh, yeah, sorry, spear and uh, and short sword. Um, so you have both your weapons in hand now. What uh, what special action are you thinking about doing? I would like to try twin faint. All right, can you read twin faint off to us? Do you have? The, I the can't text for that? because uh, oh, I don't okay. have access on that. Uh, if it were in roll twenty, I could do it, but I don't have that in front of me. I just have the uh, action or the uh, ability. Well, that's okay, Dan, because I have a pocket edition of the what? core rulebook right here. So I'm Jason, just going to go straight to What's a pocket to the, edition? A pocket edition. <laughs> Paizo is not paying me enough for the, oh, yeah, <laughs> for me to, to advertise the specific <laughs> pocket edition. for something. They are dope, though. I'm just going to say I, that. I, I really should dope. set up affiliate links for this channel and be like, yes, buy it through Amazon, I mean, through my affiliate link. Um, all right. One of these days, I'll become better at this whole, like you know, streamer thing. Anyway. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Twin Fate requirements. You are wielding two melee weapons, each in a different hand, which you are. You make a dazzling series of attacks with both weapons, using the first attack to throw your foe off guard against the second attack at a different angle. Make one strike with each one of your two melee weapons, both against the same target. The target is flat-footed against the second attack. Apply your multiple attack penalty to the strikes normally. So basically, mm -hmm. you get to make two attacks... And the second one, it will be flat-footed to. So which, and once which it's it, once it's flat-footed, then we yeah. can get into that. Well, I need to hit first, so let, let's not even so, worry about so that. So let's I need to let's hit actually first. talk about flat-footed though here for just half a second because okay. yeah. this is one way that you can make a creature flat-footed, but it's by no means the only way you can make a creature. So uh, I'm gonna just paste in another rat here for just half a second, Dan. And we're gonna we're gonna move around here. So yeah. when when you're being attacked by two foes, that's trouble, right? You know, if there were two rats there, they'd both attack you. That you're just getting hit a whole bunch of times. However, there's a special thing uh, that can happen in Pathfinder called flanking. 
flanking occurs when you're being attacked from opposite sides. So if you weren't backed up against the wall here, or let's say the rat was over here, um, now the rats are flanking you. And the way you determine flanking is you draw a line from center to center to the creatures that are attacking you. And if that line goes through opposite sides or corners of you, then you are being flanked. Uh, now, when you are flanked, you are flat-footed to those attacks. Flat-footed means that you take a penalty of two to your AC. So that is how that would normally work. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that extra rat there. Don't need to tag team you. Not yet. Okay. Uh, I, I was I was actually expecting you to delete the damaged rat and leave the healthy one and be like, oh, that's weird. And <laughs> it's so unusual. He's a healing rat. He, he's got oh shit. Okay, that, he's got that's he's a got big wrinkle. He's got battle medicine. He heals himself <laughs> with a tiny little rat healing kit. <laughs> I like it. It's like a little got, thing with like a little red cross on it. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got he's got little band aids with like a cheese on them. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I yeah. like it. No, it's nice. It's really nice. All right. Um, okay, here we go. Jason. Uh, first attack is with the spear. All right. This is a plus four to hit. Okay. And bam. 19. So you swing with the spear, and that is going to hit. So uh, you easily catch the rat uh, off guard and uh, are going to deal it damage. Um Go ahead and deal it damage, Dan. I have a sneaky suspicion you're probably just going to kill it at this point. Although yeah, the spear no. doesn't get a bonus, does it? No, it's just plus oh, one okay. for Maybe damage. Not, Maybe not. Two. That is two a damage. Two. That is not enough to kill the rat. <laughs> okay, <damn> well. <laughs> All right. This All rat right. has a fighting chance yet. Um, now, Jason, uh, let's see. So he is now flat-footed to me, correct? Correct. Against okay. this second attack. So you did yes. a special rogue ability, right? Remember I said, oh, you get all these basic actions, right? We kind of went through those. Things like, you know, aid and crawl and move and stand and stride and all that. Thing. But as a rogue, you have special actions that you can take. And this one allows you to make two attacks. Uh, it costs two actions. So you don't really save any actions, but it does say that your second attack, they're treated as flat-footed. So that means my AC is going to be lower, but it's your second attack. So you will still take the multiple attack penalty. Right, right. And it, for me, it was minus four. Or minus, minus four three? because minus it's, minus, four. it's minus four because it's an agile weapon. Okay, so then this is a plus three to hit yep. is what I get here. <gasps> 20. 20 will hit. Nice. So um, okay. that is that is definitely going to kill the rat. But you know what? Here, we're going to say, just so that okay. we can explore it here for a second, we're going to say that that was just a few higher, right? So instead of 20, okay. if it were a 23. 23? So if you, oh, it's if you, 13. Damn it. Yeah. It's, uh, it would have been a critical hit. So critical hits are a really important thing in Pathfinder. They... You can get a critical uh, success on almost anything, on a skill check, on a saving throw, on an attack roll. Um, you can also get critical failures on skill checks and saving throws and attack rolls. Now, for the purposes of this, the thing that we really want to focus on here is what would happen on a critical hit. Uh, your 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 dagger, or sorry, your short sword strike is going to kill the rat. You, you're going to do a d6 plus four. It has one hit point left, so it's going to die. Um, hey, wait, Jason, really quick. What yeah. determines that it's a critical hit? So it, that's because I, if I wouldn't have rolled a 20, I still could have made it a critical hit. Correct. Possibly. Now, the way critical hits work in Pathfinder, or critical successes, is you roll a 20 on the die. That's almost always going to be a critical hit. And I'll explain why I have to say almost always here in a second. But almost okay. always it's a critical. Um, or you beat the target number by 10. So in this case, the rat was flat-footed, which took its armor class down to 13, which means if you get a 23 or higher, it is also a critical hit, even if the die isn't a 20. Now, before when I said, when a die is a 20, it's a critical, almost always, what actually happens is when you roll a 20, you still determine whether or not it was a hit or a miss or whatever as normal, and then you treat the success or the result as one category better. Okay, so, okay. Let's say you were attacking something with an AC of 50. Um, nah, 50 is too high. Let's say 30. Okay. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what happens if you attack an AC 50 creature here in a sec. But let's say you were attacking a creature with an AC of 30. And you only have a bonus of 7. 
So if you roll a natural 20, that would be a 27. Well, a 27 is still a miss, but because you rolled a 20, it would be treated as a hit instead, but it would not okay. be treated as a critical hit. Okay. Okay. And it would be miss, hit, critical hit. Like Correct. those are the, those are the, well, the and, steps. And critical failure is below that, right? So oh, Pathfinder has four degrees. We don't talk about that, right? Jason. Come on. Yeah, no. So, so if you were attacking a, let's say there's a, a rampaging, super ancient, powerful dragon that has like an AC of 45. You can't just line up a bunch of peasant archers. They're not even going to be able to not critically fail against it, right? It has an AC of 40 something. And, and their bonus is five. So even if they roll a 20, they get a 25, which is still 20 short from 21 short from where they need, which is a critical failure. So even getting a natural 20 only takes it from a critical failure to oh, a miss. failure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they still don't hit. <laughs> right, All right. Right. Okay. So that's a dope way of doing it. I like the way that that's laid out. That's, that's pretty cool. And it should be noted that a, a rolling a one works in the opposite, right? So it, it, it causes you to treat the, the, the result as one category worse. So let's say okay. you're a super skilled fighter and you're attacking, you know, a, a farmer, right? And you've got a bonus of 20 to hit. Well, if you roll a one, that only gives you a 21. And if that would normally only be a hit, because let's say the farmer has an AC of 16 and you get a 21, well, that would be a hit, but because you rolled a one, it would turn into a miss. Okay. Um, so that's really, you know, that's how the system plays out in that um, ones and twenties aren't automatic, but they mean that you step it in one, one degree. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in that direction. So that's it. So, so it does play with the idea to say, look, this is, this is a pretty badass thing, but you rolled a 20. Yeah. So you'll at least get a hit possibly. Yeah. Like you might yeah. still get a hit. It just won't be a crit. Yeah. You don't get to, like that. you don't get to just, you know, it's one of the things that, that kind of bugged us with Pathfinder first edition is that it did live in kind of a thing where it was like, well, one through 19 is a miss and then 20 is a critical hit. And that, that, that was it. And it was it's kind of weird. Uh, you know, uh, things being equal, this works a lot better and it has a lot better uh, kind of feel at the table where it's like, yeah, your skilled archer might get lucky and land an arrow hit on the dragon that is super powerful, but that's not going to be a strategy for success. You're going to need right. to figure out a better way to deal with the thing than, than brute force. Cause you, you can't just, can't. I like it. Um, I like that. So let's get back to this rat situation. Yep, here. sorry. I didn't mean um, to go off on a tangent. No, no, no. Sorry about that. No, no, no. No need to apologize at all. I wanted to explain how critical hits and failures work. So um, when we're dealing with a critical hit, it the base effect of it is just roll your damage as normal and double the result. Now, there are some things that don't double, like there's some, some specific types of damage that don't double, like if you get some bonus damage that only shows up on a critical hit, that doesn't automatically double. Um, so for example, there are some, uh, you know, weapons that are like, oh, on a critical hit, this does a D10 fire damage. Um, that doesn't automatically double, but most other damage just doubles. So if you were to roll a critical hit here, it would be a D6 plus four, and then you would just take whatever that total is and double it. Okay. Um, and so the dam the, the bonus, the, the damage bonus also doubles. Yep. Everything okay. about it just, you just deal double damage. Um, okay. So yeah, and we don't roll twice. We we just roll once and and double the result. So that it can be kind of swingy. You can roll really high and be like, okay, well I deal thirty, um, or you can roll really low and like be like, well I deal six. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing is worse than than making an attack roll and being like, well I rolled a one on the damage. So uh, like if this rat critically hit you and I rolled a one, it'd be like take four. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah, really play exactly. out too well. Um, right. So. Uh, there are, you always want to be aware of what critical, uh, effects you have floating around. Some weapons, when you become more skilled at them, have critical specialization effects based on the type of weapon it is, all that sort of stuff. So in this case, um, you know, you would roll a D6 plus four. Uh, you can go ahead and roll the damage. Um, it doesn't, okay. doesn't matter. The rat's about to die. Um. Nine yeah. points of damage. Nine. And if that was a critical hit, that would have been 18. It would have one shot at the rat in one hit. <laughs> that, would, now, that would have been awesome. The rat is a pretty minor threat, so you don't have to worry about it too much. This is also a good time, though, for us to talk about add-on effects that happen based on conditions. In fact, you get one that we overlooked because it was flat-footed against this attack. 
which means you get to apply your sneak attack damage because rogues have a special ability that says deal a d6 damage whenever you're attacking a flat-footed foe. Um, so you can go ahead and bounce me another d6 and that would get added on. And if this were a critical hit, that would get doubled as well. So now we're up to 11, turning it into 22. You stab the rat so hard its children die. Like, it's not. <laughs> that rat's super dead. So, um, but this this is a thing that the rat has as well. Like, had the rat managed to bite you, it could have affected you, infected you with filth fever, a disease, right? And filth fever, uh, it being an affliction, is something that it, it's not going to hurt you right away, but over the coming days you would start to get sick and start taking damage, and it could eventually kill you. Um, it is a deadly disease, so you would have to try and make fortitude saves to kind of get over the disease. And as a rogue... Uh, that's not good. That's going to be tricky. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So that's how that works. Now, in our in in our last session, Dan, one of the things that we talked about was spells and how spells function. They function in combat just kind of like any other action. Most of them take two action to cast. They have a range. Sometimes they'll ask for an attack roll or they'll require the opponent to make a saving throw. Um, these things work just like all the other checks we've been talking about. You can get critical hits. You can get critical failures on saving throws. Um, a lot of spell effects have a have a listing in them that says this is a basic save. You most often see this with like spells that deal damage. So like Burning Hands says you know deal uh, you know a, a couple d of, of fire damage, couple dice of fire damage, uh, but a basic reflex save can reduce the damage. And what that means is when they say basic, what they mean is on a critical success, you take no damage on a success. You take half damage on a failure. You take full damage and on a critical failure, you take double damage. That's what a basic save means. So those sorts of things will pop up in combat all the time. Now you've managed to defeat this, this rat here, Dan. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off the board, but let's say the rat had a friend. Oh, wait, what is that? That you, is a cinder that? rat, Dan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Granny Appleknees had a far more powerful creature lurking in her basement. <laughs> and really briefly here, we're just going to we're just going to have the cinder rat play with you for a, for a moment. And this isn't okay. we're not going to count this. This this You've is outside defeated the rat. Outside this of is, game, this Jason. Is, this is this is an example. You will notice the cinder rat has 45 hit points. It's a level 3 creature. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, oh, is, uh, is what you should be thinking about. Now the rat, uh, this rat, uh, comes crawling up out of the tunnel, uh, and, and sneaks up on you, uh, really quickly. We're not going to bother. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll its initiative here. So let me go ahead and add its turn, select it, go ahead and roll initiative and it gets a 28. Oh, so it gets no. to go first. <laughs> and uh, for its first action, I'm going to have it move up to that spot. So that'll be one of its actions because it was in the tunnel. Uh, you didn't see it sneaking up. And the moment it gets next to you, you can notice that this burning rat is emitting terrible fumes, fetid fumes, in fact. Uh, everyone in the area is concealed by the smoke. However, the rat can see through the smoke. Um, and you need to make a fortitude save. Oh, cool. Yeah. As you start um, inhaling the deadly smoke from the evil rat. That's, that's a 10. That's a, a 10, 10. That is a critical failure. <laughs> Jason, I'd like to use my hero point, please. <laughs> Very well. I will let you use your hero point. Hero points are a thing in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. You start each session with one hero point, and you can spend your hero point at any point in time to re-roll a roll. You can also use a hero point when you're unconscious uh, to stop yourself from dying. But uh, you know what? Uh, we, we won't worry about whether or not you're dying right now. You're just going to make this saving throw against the Cinder Rat Smoke. So go ahead and re-roll your Fortitude save. I'm not even going to look. It's going to be so good. It's going to be amazing. Well, it's, it's plus five. So, so, I don't know. It's, so the upside is, Dan, it's 16. no longer a critical failure. It's just a failure. God damn it. <laughs> Yay. Look, it's not a critical failure anymore. Take that, mom. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you are sickened one. The sickened condition uh, basically just gives you a penalty on all your D20 rolls. Okay. So there's that. That it was its first action. 
for its second action, it is going to attempt to bite you with its flaming rat jaws. Here they come. It sounds like you're just making that up on this. Okay, come on. All right. I am not. <laughs> uh, the Damn cinder it. rat bites you. Uh, armor class 21 is going to hit. It and, does, yeah. And you are going to take 11 points of damage. Now, this dealt... Uh, let's see here. It dealt... Uh, uh, let's see. 1d8 plus 4 fire damage. I rolled a 7, so you took 11 damage. And you are now on fire. Well, thank you, Jason. It's just good to hear. We, we, today, we just say, you're fire. Like, that's usually how you say it. That's what the kids like to say. So, I, yeah, thank I'm you. Sure, I'm sure that they hear. do. So, you are now on fire. And uh, you are sickened by the smoke. That was its second action. It's going to go ahead and take its third action to attempt to bite you again. Oh, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> 17's going to miss. miss. <laughs> yep, that misses. All right. So, uh, that was the, 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 the flaming rat's turn. Come to avenge its fallen brethren. You now get to go, Dan. Uh, all right. I'm going to twin faint with my spear and my short sword. Awesome. I mean, this is a total Rocky moment right now. Like, yeah, you got the band, this. The, the orchestra is swelling up behind me. I've got Burgess Meredith over in the corner being like, you got this silo. Don't give up. It's your thing. You're your time to shine. And I'm just, I'm just doing it. Yeah. That's yeah. This is Granny Applebee's plus... looks down from up above. Is everything okay down there? <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Granny. I'm busy right now. Uh, all right. That is, what's my bonus? That's a uh, 16, 16. A 16 is going to miss. <laughs> Your right. uh, your spear does not manage to connect with the rat. It is too it is too tricky for you. It's also hard to see, so that even if you do score a hit, we're gonna have to do a flat check to see if it actually if it uh, actually does it, make because it because it's concealed in the smoke. Ah, cramp. Okay, so now that does not uh, because I missed with the first one. Twin faint is off the table now because he's not flat footed to me. I have to hit with both of them to make no. twin faint. No, work, no, no, right? no. The second one still. Counts as flat footed even if oh, the first one missed. Yeah. I didn't know I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. so this is gonna be a plus three to hit. Yes. And this is with my short sword. This is the second attack with my short sword, plus three. Yep. Uh fifteen. Fifteen no. is going to Damn miss. It. And you're sickened, so technically it's one less. Uh oh. so uh you you uh stab out at the rat twice, but do not manage to hit either time. Uh, you have one action remaining, Dan. Okay, probably so probably let... forever. <laughs> um. Ah, uh, cripes. You can run under that table. You're short enough. Can I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, I assume I can't get through this way because of the barrels, right? No, let's say no. Okay, that's fair. Uh, all right, I'm going to do this, this, and then uh, this. I'm going to try to <laughs> get up to there, okay. but around, basically, yeah, sure. just going around. Okay. Yeah. All right, you make it to there. The rat goes. It's going to follow you up to the stairs right there. It has to move to do so. And then it's going to attempt to bite you. <laughs> the whole time I'm screaming, Granny, Granny Applebee's, please come save me. For the love of God, <laughs> save me from this fucking thing. <laughs> so I did also forget, Dan, that you're on fire and took fire damage at the end of your turn. But it, oh, that's true. it's not going to matter because the rat comes up and bites you again. And reduces you to below zero well, hit Jason, points. Well, Jason, wait. Let's let's look at the numbers. Let's do the math. You never know. Don't just assume. So my you, my AC is eighteen. Got a um, I've got nine. Let me look at what you did. Yeah, I'm fucked. Yeah. That that actually. Yeah, I know. Hit, All right. So. so you're gonna go ahead and take another twelve points of damage. Uh, that's going to take you to negative three, but we don't go to negatives in Pathfinder. You just drop to zero. So this gives us a chance to talk about how death and dying works. So the way death and dying works is that when you're reduced to zero hit points, 
your initiative moves to right before the creature that knocked you down. Um, in this way, if there were multiple participants in the combat, everybody else would get to take a turn before you, it got back to your turn and you might die. Um, so what happens is if you get knocked to zero, you go to dying one. If you get knocked to zero by a critical hit, you instead go to dying two. When it comes back to your turn, if no one has helped you, you make what's called a flat check. A flat check is just rolling a d20 and you're trying to get above a certain number. Now, in this case, that number is, uh, I believe it's 10 plus your dying condition. If I recall correctly, let me double check 10 or 11. So what ends up happening is you end up having to make, uh, the flat check. Uh, it's DC 10 plus your current dying value. Uh, that, I was right. Uh, so in this case, you make the flat check. If you succeed on the flat check, your dying value is reduced by one. If it goes to zero, you're just unconscious and stable. Um, Perfect. if you get a critical success, it decreases by two. If you get a failure, it increases by one. And if you get a critical failure, it increases by two. And if your dying value ever gets to four, you die. Okay. okay. So that is how that works. Now you have fallen unconscious and the door upstairs opens and granny Applenies throws a bucket of water down the stairs, scaring <laughs> off the cinder rat. The cinder rat flees back into the sewer. It doesn't like water. It's terrified of water. So it flees back under the, into the sewers and is, 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 is a threat we will deal with on another day. You will have to hunt down and avenge yourself against that rat. Uh, but it does get back to your turn. So let's go ahead and do a recovery check. So go ahead and just bounce me a D20, Dan. And the target number you're trying to get here is 11. You just need 11 okay. or higher. Easy. I got this. Yeah. It, oh, it was almost a 20. It was An so eight. close. Now, an eight means that your dying value would increase by one. So you would go from dying one to dying two. Now, other folks can come in and try and help you. They can try and heal you. If anyone gives you any healing, you're no longer dying. You don't have to worry about it. You regain consciousness. Um, if you were to stabilize, then you'd just be unconscious for a little while and could possibly wake up later on your own. So that even if you were in a dungeon and you, you know, you kill the monster, but because you're on fire, you fall unconscious, um, you know, you could still find yourself in a situation where you're unconscious in a dungeon by yourself, but may wake up a few hours later, but <laughs> it's not a good situation to be in. Uh, cause if anything finds you while you're laying there like that, you make for an easy snack. Now there's another thing that's important to note. Let's say Granny Applenies comes downstairs and feeds you a healing potion because she can certainly do that. But in this case, in her, in her case, she's feeding you a healing cookie. They just came out of the oven. They're they're <laughs> delicious. They're they're I they're, love they're, it. they're uh, uh, cinnamon raisin cookies, and uh, she feeds oatmeal cinnamon raisin cookies, and she feeds you one of those, and it heals you for some 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 damage. Uh, so let's say it just heals you for a D four. You would roll that, and that's how many hit points you would be. But when you come back from being unconscious like that, you gain the wounded condition. And the wounded condition doesn't really do much to you unless you fall unconscious again. So the wounded condition just sits there saying that you have taken some grievous harm. And if you fall unconscious again, you're going to die easy. So the wounded condition adds to your dying the next time you fall unconscious. So you would get wounded one. If you fall unconscious again, you would immediately go to wounded two or wounded three on a critical hit. If you then came back to consciousness again, your wounded condition would go up by one to two, which means on a critical hit, if you got knocked back to zero with the wounded two condition, you would go straight to dying four and die. Okay. Okay. So that's so it, not it's good. cumulative. It, 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 and, and to reset that, it, it'd be like a long rest or something. Or... So the way to reset that is to use the medicine skill. Uh, the medicine mm. skill can remove your wounded condition. And that's okay. covered in the in the in the medicine skill under treat deadly wounds. You can go in there and patch someone up, but that takes a minimum of like ten minutes to do. So it's not something you can do in a fight. So generally speaking, in Pathfinder Second Edition, once you get knocked unconscious, you have to start playing carefully because now you're in serious you're in serious danger of dying. It is very easy for characters to slip away 
uh, because no one was able to get to them and they just kept failing that flak check. There are very few ways to be better at that flak check. One of them is you can, you can take a feat that changes it so that you don't die on dying four, you die on dying five. Like, oh. that's it. There's no good way to monkey with that flat check. This is another place, though, that you can spend your hero points. If you're unconscious and have any hero points left, you don't right now, but if you had any hero points left, you can spend all of them to automatically stabilize and not be dying. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So it's that's kind of why it's a good just-in-case have a hero point. Because if you only have one left, then it's going to be one hero point to stabilize, and you'll be okay. Correct. Okay. Now, All now right. in this in this combat, we had a lot of bad things going for you. Technically, you were still on fire and whatnot, but we'll we'll assume that Granny Granny Applebee's when she threw the bucket of water down the stairs also put out your fire uh, oh, and mercy. got rid Thank of the, the rat. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you regain consciousness on Granny Applebee's doilyed couch. With a plate of nice. delicious oatmeal raisin cookies at your side and a warm glass of milk. Granny is super happy that you managed to get rid of the rat down there, and she's already called some foreman to come by and seal the hole so that this deadly problem never happens again. And that is the end of Little Adventure. Yay. So there we go, Dan. That's how combat works. In Pathfinder. Uh that, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Um, is the, uh, so now really, really quick, uh, what sort of, uh, so, uh, so we're done. I almost died. I'm, yeah. I'm recuperating. Sure. What sort of things would I get from a long rest? What sort of things would I get from a short rest? Things so, like that for so what, a, like what, my HP, the way that that works. And, and we don't really frame them as long or short rests. You can rest okay. overnight and heal hit points, right? Um, you know, you, by resting overnight, you do heal naturally some hit points and you can even heal more if you've got folks helping you. Um, one of the things that you can do, one of the most common things that folks do after a fight, um, is they use the medicine skill to patch up wounds. So the medicine mm. skill has, a, 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 a feature in it that takes 10 minutes that is just treat deadly wounds. And if you succeed, you can heal a whole bunch of hit points and it's not magical healing and you can get that right after the fight. Um, but once you've gotten it, you're immune to it for an hour so that you cannot do more of it right away. The, the wounds need time to kind of sit and stitch and, and you know, the bruises need time to, 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 to pan out before you can do more of it. So there is like when you're adventuring in a dungeon, you have to kind of decide, do we need to go fast? Do we need to get to the end of this quickly? Or should we take it slow and deliberately and make sure folks have as many hit points as we can give them between fights? It's a, it's a balancing act. You, you have to kind of weigh how much time you have, how much time there is in the day between what kind of risk you're willing to take. And sometimes the adventure isn't going to let you, right? Oh, you're in a dungeon where you're being chased by a uh, tribe of kobolds that are intent upon hunting you down and you're running from room to room to room and you can't stop and take a breather. You have to just keep pushing on. So... Um, you know, there are times where those sorts of tactical considerations kind of give way. In this case, Granny Applebee's was more than happy to bandage up your wounds and uh, send you on your way with your tidy pouch filled with <laughs> silver for a job well done. Um, Even though she had to save me, she still paid me, which I respect that. That's that's cool. Granny Applebee's is is nothing if not true to her word. So we're, we're uh, definitely putting her on the NPC list. There, yeah, sure. there we go. We're coming back to Granny Applebee's. That's right. All right, folks. Uh, that is about all we have here today. I want to thank everybody for stopping by and uh, watching all these videos uh, here and on YouTube. Uh, we have seen a phenomenal outpouring of of comments and sharing and likes, and I really do appreciate it. I do hope that uh, while you're here, you subscribe to the channel. Uh, that does help me out quite a bit. And, you know, throw some likes around on these videos. Anything uh, helps uh, more folks see this content. So that's all I have for today, folks. Dan, I want to thank you for uh, being my guinea pig as always. Absolutely. Thank you, Bowman. Yeah. Thank you, folks. Uh, hope you've enjoyed these. We'll be back next week with more. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.